Welcome. My name's Joe Curtitoni, and I have the honor and privilege of being the mayor of this great, innovative city of Somerville, Massachusetts. And we welcome you here uh, to Somerville. Uh, we are going to make some exciting announcements today. We are joined by some esteemed guests, who most of which of whom will be speaking. I'd like to, before we start, also recognize some important guests and partners joining us, joining us in the room. Um, from the Somerville Board of Aldermen, we're joined by the Award Alderman in this, dis this district, the Ward to Alderman, Ms. Marion Houston. I want to welcome her and thank you for her support on today's event. <laughs> and Alderman at large, representing the rest of the board, Alderman uh, Jack Connolly. Thanks, Jack. I want to thank uh, the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office for Strategic Planning and Community de Development, Michael Glavin. Michael. And our Economic Developer, uh, Development Director, Ed O'Donnell, and their entire team. I also want to welcome uh, from Rockland Trust, uh, Brian Slater. Rockland Trust one of the important funders uh, making today's event possible. Thanks, Brian, for being here. We're here to welcome Greentown Labs to the innovation city that is Somerville. Not an innovation district, where we admit we're not a center, but an innovation city. We're a city that prides itself on innovation, creativity, originality. We have made it a priority as part of our comprehensive 20-year summer vision plan to attract and bring in companies like Greentown Labs. This move is a result of our own Future Economies Commission, launched to ensure that Somerville is at the forefront of the next generation of economic opportunities. I mean, we recognize the need to support these new industries more than a decade ago. The fruits of our labor are now ripe for the picking. We are providing the vision, the planning, the zoning, the infrastructure, taking the page out of your book, Governor, and your team, those infrastructure improvements and business and economic development policy to attract these types of 21st century industries. Greentown Labs coming here to Somerville is an endorsement of all those efforts and a testament to the economic strength of this community. I'm grateful for the support of the Commonwealth in providing a Clean Energy Center grant to Greentown Labs to assist in their move to our city, bringing with them almost 100 jobs to Somerville and plans to expand that to more than 140 jobs. Our partners at the state level are helping to ensure that all of Massachusetts stays at the forefront of the industries of tomorrow. At our level, the city of Somerville facilitated Greentown Labs move through a $300,000 working capital loan, part of our new I-Fund, that utilizes community development block grant funds. This is part, again, a new in initiative by the city to support innovative business activities and new employment opportunities. And that loan contains requirements for new job creation and that not less than 51% of new job hires go to those who meet moderate and low income standards. Greentown Labs also agrees to use its best efforts to hire some of our residents in all available job opportunities. It's kind of funny, when I visit Greentown Labs, most of the employees or partners seem to live in some of them. <laughs> I mean, the types of jobs we envision for the future of our, the exact types of the jobs that Greentown Labs offers. Those job opportunities like those offered by Greentown Labs are in that type that will fuel part of some of those renaissance and that we continue to work to attract here. This area we're all in is vibrant and blossoming, already home to several innovative companies that are fueling some of those industrial renaissance. This facility formerly housed the Ames Envelope facility a legacy industry started by a legacy family for almost a century in Somerville until three years ago. Since then, what has organically grown in the area with the city's support is a campus of small startup industries and enclaves, including the shared spaces of Artisan's Asylum and Fringe, along with the creative startup manufacturers like Kapow and Recovery Green Roofs. But it's not only happening in this part of Somerville. The city recently welcomed an e-commerce innovator, the Gromit, to Davis Square. Somerville not only provides the space needed for these industries to flourish, 
but the active, walkable, bikeable, and transit-oriented neighborhoods, thank, to the, thank you, Governor, uh, that attract workers and those industries who want to live near where they work. These organizations and companies recognize how a concentrated universe of thought, intelligence, skill, and value work together and can create the industries of the future and economic opportunity for Somerville and the entire region. What was created through one industrial revolution and faded away to another economic transformation has spurred another new tech revolution here in Somerville. Both current industries thinking about expansion and startups look for a place where their concepts can thrive or look into Somerville because it's a city that supports, again, originality, creativity, and innovation. Companies looking to move from five to 10,000 square feet up to 20 and 30,000 square feet are looking to communities that offer that potential growth. And that's what we have here in Summer. In Assembly Square, developers are building a 100,000 square foot Class A office space at spec because we understand and research that trend. And we have not seen that here in Somerville, I don't think ever, beyond a generation. These companies are making their decisions in a six to eight month window. We know that. We saw this coming and put the work in early to prepare ourselves for the new industrial revolution. We are going out and we're going to get those companies. We're bringing them here. And we're really excited that we have the partnership and vision and leadership at the state level from Governor Patrick and his entire team. And we're joined by two of his secretaries today, Secretary Rick Sullivan and Greg Bilecki. At this time, I want to hear the microphone over to a very important person, someone whose leadership has spurred and laid a solid bedrock foundation for our collective economic future. Someone who leads with the approach that you act today with an eye and tomorrow. Someone who understands that the investments can't be made piecemeal. That we have to change the systems around transportation, housing, infrastructure, quality of life to make sure that Somerville has, a, I mean Somerville, the state has a sustainable, vibrant, economy for the long term. Please welcome a great friend to the city of Somerville, the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Governor Deval Patrick. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Mayor, thank you for the always warm welcome here to Somerville. I was thinking, uh, Jason, it was a year or two ago that um, Jason toured me around uh, Greentown Labs in your existing location, or old location, in Boston. And I was dazzled by the creativity, by the imagination, by the determination of the people who were there creating our future, building tomorrow, and making it real. And here in a very short time, you're moving into space that doubles the available space, if I understand it correctly, for precisely that kind of entrepreneurship and job growth. And I am thrilled to be a part of it. I want to congratulate all of the folks who have helped to make Greentown Labs the reality it is and to continue that growth. Because you understand, as we do, that growth is a choice. It's a choice. That we create our own future. And we do that by investing, investing but not willy-nilly, according to a strategy, a winning strategy, based on education, on innovation, and on infrastructure. Education because it's our calling card around the world. It's what we're best known for. There are nearly 300 colleges and universities within an hour and a half drive of where we sit right now, right now. I don't think there's a greater concentration of brain power anywhere else on the planet. And so we cultivate those industries, those innovative industries that depend on that kind of concentration of brain power. The life sciences is an example. IT is an example. So is clean and alternative energy. Yes, it is important for, from the perspective of environmental stewardship. Yes, it is important in terms of controlling our energy future and our energy independence. But it is also important that that future be built here, that we have a home for it here in Massachusetts, because there are jobs and economic opportunity that come from it. So education, innovation, and then the unglamorous work of infrastructure, which supports everything else roads, rails, bridges, the T, 
frankly, uh, uh, access to high-speed uh, internet, public and affordable housing. All of this has been what we have been trying to do in partnership with Somerville and cities and towns across the Commonwealth and with private investors everywhere. And so I'm here to celebrate another example of that working and the expansion of it that comes from it. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, and your team. Um, I understand they're just a couple of permit issues, but they need to get worked out pretty quickly. Okay. Should we just step over here to this corner? And... No issues. I want, to, uh, I want to thank and congratulate Jason and Emily and all of the investors and entrepreneurs who were part of Greentown Labs, where it is today and where it's going to be. I want to acknowledge and thank Alicia Barton and her team from Mass CEC who have put up uh, some money to help uh, make this project happen on behalf of the state. Secretary Bialecki and Secretary Sullivan, who are here, have just been marvelous partners and have shown, I think, their friendship to this city and to this enterprise and to this sector. And you can count on us. We've got 18 more months um, before um, at least the three of us have to find a new job. <laughs> and by the way, keep going, because I'll be looking to some of you for uh, precisely that. But in that time, let us make the most of these opportunities. Because to the mayor's point about the spirit of partnership, what we must be about in that partnership is making decisions today with our eye to tomorrow. And that's why I'm excited to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. At this time, uh, please welcome, he's the founder of Greentown Labs, Jason Hanna. Thank you all so much for coming out here. I'm just kind of standing here, you know, looking at the crowd behind me, the crowd in front of me, and, you know, I'm really amazed. And um, I am the founder of Greentown. I'm actually the co-founder, technically. Uh, Mr. Sam White, I don't know where you are today. Uh, raise your hand. So Sam and I started this um, a little over two years ago. And I don't think any of us had any indication that it would turn into such a community and it would turn into uh, such a, an effort and uh, a presence um, in the clean energy industry. We simply were a couple of entrepreneurs who were looking for low cost space where we could build our businesses and we could do that where we had an office and where we had room to build prototypes. Um, it happened in Cambridge. It started there in this very grungy space. Um, with help from all of you and some of our sponsors and supporters, we were able to move to the South Boston waterfront um, where we established our first facility. We had no idea how it was going to turn out. Um, and in just over two short years, um, it has exceeded our expectations, I think, in every sense of the word. Um, 28 companies with us today. We have a waiting list, Emily tells me, of now 15. Um, it's become such a thing that I could no longer, we built this as a grassroots organization, we could no longer keep up with the demand. It, it really needed its own team, its own staff to support this. So we made the effort and the decision about a year ago to go find a wonderful executive director who could be the face of this organization. So Sam and I and the rest of the entrepreneurs could spend more time working on our own businesses. And we were thrilled to death that we were able to meet someone like Emily who took an interest in what we were doing. And uh, in February, we formally made the transition. So I think this may have been the first public speaking opportunity where we really get to recognize uh, her presence in the organization. I think all of you know her very well through sponsorships, through the work she's doing in the space. But um, we'd like to bring her up and have Emily say a few great words uh, about the new space and talk about the new vision for the future. So our executive director, Emily Reichert. Well, we have a lot of exciting plans for what we're going to do with this space. But I think the most important thing to know about this space is that it's going to allow us to grow our organization and grow the number of entrepreneurs that we can accommodate here. And what that means is that they can grow their companies and create more innovation. And that's more jobs for the state of Massachusetts, excuse me, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <laughs> we are so excited to be moving to Somerville. 
You can feel it in the air here. It is energetic, it's vibrant, it's youthful, and it's entrepreneurial. And this is the place that Greentown Labs should be, and we're very excited to be here. We are also excited to be part of this area, this ecosystem that's growing up around Union Square, Somerville, and especially here in the Ames Business Park, where we're going to have wonderful new neighbors like the Artisans Asylum and Brooklyn Boulders. I'm not sure if they're here today, but um, we're excited to be your neighbors. We want to thank all of the organizations that have brought us this far, and there are a lot of them but especially to recognize the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center under the leadership of Alicia Barton. And also uh, here with us today, uh, Invested Development. Uh, we've also got Foley Hoag, which is a law firm that's basically made it possible for us to do everything we're doing right now with leases and permits and whatnot. And also Wolf Greenfield. There's a lot of other sponsors and supporters here and we're thankful to all of you. So, I especially want to thank, however, the city of Somerville and particularly the mayor of Somerville. We believe in your vision for the future of this city and we are super excited to be a part of it. And we also want to thank your team who's been simply amazing to work with. Um, I want to call out Ed O'Donnell and Michael Glavin who just wonderful. They, they have made it. <laughs> If it's possible, they have made us even more excited to be coming to Somerville. Um, finally, I'd just like to thank Governor Patrick and his team for having the vision and leadership around building a clean energy economy in Massachusetts. It's no wonder that there are all kinds of clean energy companies sprouting up in this area. And at Greentown Labs, we're just excited to create the home that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jason and Emily. And thank you for those kind words. I'm glad I had some part in getting you. I always thought it's because I sent two, six, four guys from Boston down to see you. You might have been Timmy over here. Uh, at this time, I, I have the honor and privilege of uh, introducing one of two secretaries here, and uh, Rick Sullivan, who's the Secretary of the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. I worked with him when I first became mayor, and he was the mayor of Westfield, and then Mayor Sullivan um, it was revered by all the mayors, new and those who've been here for a while in terms of his leadership and his strategic thinking. We were so excited when Governor Patrick made his one of his first um, important uh, decisions appointed then Mayor Sullivan to become DCR Commission. He became a true partner to municipalities across the state. For Somerville, uh, we're utilizing the very little open space that we have where more than 60% of it was controlled by the space, making improvements there. Uh, Commissioner Sullivan uh, really was a big partner in that. And now as a secretary of EEA, uh, he's continued that 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 approach. He's, he's always outreaching to communities, he's accessible, he's helped to unlock economic opportunity, environmental, improve on environmental justice, and has been a great leader for the state. Please welcome Secretary Rick Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for that uh, extremely kind introduction, uh, although uh, when you said revered and anyone who's known him for a while, I was already feeling old enough in this room uh, without that introduction. Uh, but I am extremely uh, excited to be here because uh, I do wear a couple of different hats, certainly as the secretary, but I also chair the board at the Mass Clean Energy uh, Center. And I do also want to add my uh, thanks uh, for the leadership of uh, Alicia Barton uh, as the CEO at, uh, at the Clean Energy Center, as well as uh, Deb uh, Mutchler, who's here uh, as well. She serves on our board of directors and works in the field um, of workforce development and uh, is a valued member um, of that team uh, as well. Uh, today, uh, we, are, we are pleased uh, to be able to announce that the Clean Energy Center uh, will be able to, uh, to help support the move here uh, to Somerville uh, and that we are really focused on a number of different things which really come out of the landmark legislation that Governor Patrick and the legislature passed back in 07 and 2008 
which created the, uh, the Clean Energy Center and charged it really with one focus, uh, and that is to grow the clean energy sector here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to make strategic investments in innovation to ultimately grow jobs. And where better uh, to do that than with Greentown Labs, who has been a great partner. Uh, they will be and are an applicant in the Incubate Mass program, which has been set up by the Clean Energy Center to encourage uh, incubation centers across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, to grow jobs and to train individuals for the jobs of uh, tomorrow uh, in the field of clean energy, as well as um, significantly supporting uh, workforce development and in particular uh, internships, not only uh, during the summer, but year-round uh, internships, which has been a hugely successful um, program for us at the Clean Energy Center. And this year alone, we had some 922 students uh, apply for an intern, paid internship program across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with now 126 different companies across the state um, taking on those internships. And what is most impressive, I believe, is that last year alone, 29% of the students that went through that internship program were offered either a part-time or a full-time job uh, with those very companies, not just in the field, but with those companies. It shows you how fast this sector is growing. And it was the vision of Governor Patrick that knew if we invested in what we do best in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts around education and innovation, uh, that it would in fact grow and take off here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I know Secretary Bilecki is going to talk in a moment about, you know, when you do get too big for Greentown Labs and you have to go to market and you have to go to manufacturing, there's going to be a lot of decisions uh, that need to be made. All of those needs can be met someplace, whether it's here in Somerville, but someplace in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we want you to grow those businesses across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I think what is most exciting here today is that the vision of Governor Patrick of making those strategic investments in the clean energy sector, in innovation, in the next generation, today's ceremony puts a face on exactly what innovation in the next generation here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is. Because while I felt old with my introduction, when you look around the room, it is the people standing around, the new innovators, the new entrepreneurs, the new business owners in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that are, that are flying in the air with, with balloons and tethered uh, wind turbines to be able to take off uh, diesel fuel generators or whether they're uh, uh, working with batteries with soils and bacterias, whether they're doing charging stations for your phones that can be put on the street corners uh, with solar energy. It's new innovation ideas that will take off here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And sitting here now with the leadership of, of Mayor Curtitone in Somerville, we can see the face of innovation. We can see the face of the future of the clean energy sector here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I am just pleased to be part of this here today. And congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Secretary uh, Sullivan, uh, I've had the opportunity also to work with Secretary Bilecki now for several years. And I've always admired about the governor's administration that he has such a depth of talent, innovative, smart thinking, prudent individuals who understand the importance of partnering with municipalities about making important investment decisions for the long term. That partnership uh, with the Office of Economic Housing and Economic Development has paid off for many municipalities here in Somerville. What we're experiencing in this corridor would not be possible. Uh, what we're seeing happening on East Broadway with the important infrastructure investments would not have occurred. Nothing's more evident than what is happening in Assembly Square where working with Secretary Bilecki and the Governor, one, I think they made one of the smartest decisions out of any state administration. Investing that era funding during a down economy and infrastructure allowed Assembly Square to go forward. We are building the first T station in this Commonwealth in 27 years. The city utilized tools like district improvement finance and IQ, growth district initiative monies and federal monies combined with the state for $130 million of public money which leveraged one and a half billion dollars of private investment going on right now. And it was with the governor's leadership and that of his secretary. Please welcome Secretary Greg Bilecki. Thank you, Mayor. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to join in my congratulations for Greentown Labs and Jason and Emily. It's an exciting announcement today. I think it's also uh, a sign of a very exciting time for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts here uh, in the year 2013. You know, six and a half years ago, when Governor Patrick came into office, he said, we are going to focus our economic development strategy on the innovation economy, because innovation is our strength in Massachusetts, our competitive advantage, and that's where we should be focusing our energies, and that's what we've done. Uh, unfortunately for all of us, uh, that economic development strategy ran into the headwind of the greatest recession uh, that this country has seen in 50 years. Uh, but even in those difficult times, the strategy did prove itself to be a successful one. Earlier this year, according to the federal government, Massachusetts has as many jobs today as we did before the Great Recession. We're, we're one of only seven states in the country to have achieved that mark. So that shows that commitment to that strategy has paid off for us. But in my opinion, actually, that's just the beginning. And the exciting thing about what we're hearing today uh, is we are, have now positioned ourselves to take advantage of an extraordinarily special opportunity at the beginning of the 21st century. I think if you look at this is what Jason said, we're building here twice as much space uh, as he had in Boston. I think for us as a state, the governor has positioned us where we should be talking about doubling the size of our innovation economy over the next 10 years. And I think that's an ambitious but a very reasonable goal if you look at all the homework that we've done. And the governor's insistence, as you've heard already, on long-term thinking, on what would it mean uh, to have an ambitious goal like that? What would it mean to plan for success? Uh, and you've heard about the pieces that are in play today. One is we have to make sure that our innovation economy is not just Boston and Cambridge, but it's Boston and Cambridge and Somerville uh, and beyond and all over the state. And another piece is we have to make sure that our transportation infrastructure keeps up in a way so that wherever our entrepreneurs and innovators want to be, they always feel well connected to this great innovation ecosystem that we have here. So we're going to do our part on the state to make sure that we continue to make the investments and do the work necessary to plan for success. And we look forward to working with you, with everyone else in the room, and all the great entrepreneurs and innovators of the state to show the world that uh, Massachusetts has even brighter future uh, over the next 10 years uh, than it has in the past. Thanks very much. Thank you, Secretary Bilecki. Our final speaker is a close colleague of mine on the Board of Aldermen. She'll be representing the Board of Aldermen. Uh, you know, some of us not like any other municipality. We're going to act locally, but think, but we do think globally here. Uh, some of us going undergoing an incredible transformation. And the impacts and concerns of a neighborhood a, you, in the most densely populated city in New England are predictable. And when we strive and support the adaptive reuse of such a large campus, um, you know, we need to all be on the same page. We've had, I've had the great benefit of having great colleagues on the Board of Aldermen. This next colleague has supported the adaptive reuse of this building, has supported the revitalization and rezoning efforts uh, in Union Square, and Assembly Square, the Interbellum, and Brick Bottom, and Dance in the Green Line. So he's been an incredible champion to bring an innovation to this core of the city and the entire community. The war to Aldermen, Ms. Marion Houston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, want to welcome everyone here today, and I also want to recognize my colleague, Vice President of the Board of Aldermen, Jack Conley, another strong supporter of the vision of the administration of the mayor and many, many residents, and certainly of the Board of Aldermen, for this kind of growth in this city. We are in a building of yesterday that is housing the ideas of tomorrow. And when you've been around as long as I have and grown up in this very ward, someone asked me, is this your area or your territory? Yes, this is. This is Ward 2. And I have to say here, and I'd like to say publicly, this is exactly what we like to see. This is exactly part of the plan for revitalization and redevelopment of this area. The repurposing of buildings like this is ex an extraordinary opportunity, and I'm so grateful to Jason and Emily for taking this opportunity and coming here. The Artisans, the Artisans Asylum, 
Brooklyn boulders. There is so much happening in Ward 2 and in the Union Square area right now. It would take me a very long time to list the new restaurants and new businesses, taking advantage of some of our existing buildings, but also looking to the rezoning that we did and the opportunities that are just down the road in terms of new development. And what I see here is a feeder for that kind of vision. I very much want to thank the governor and his team for the support on this, the mayor and his team for, for pulling us along on this and providing that vision. And I want you all to know that at least this is one alderman, the Ward 2 alderman in this city, who supports this, will always welcome this, is looking forward to the changes coming into Union Square, and um, welcome to Ward 2. Thank you for being here today. As we wrap up, I again want to thank you all for coming here to attend. I want to welcome Greentown Labs to some of will thank the governor and his team and my team for working together to make this happen. And say to our friends and neighbors at the asylum and Greentown Lab and those who have organically grown and located in Sumble, now our job is to make sure you stay here and continue to grow here. Perhaps I have an idea we'll develop a very nimble AC system for political podiums so we're not dying up here in the heat. In any event, welcome to some of all. The speakers will be available for comments afterwards. We will not be taking questions for the podium. Thank you very much.